First, the big picture. Uh, electricity is all about the flow of free electrons. Uh, electrons don't like being next to each other, so we provide them a path to somewhere that's less crowded. And then along that path, we ask them to do some work for us. And that work might be generating heat, it might be uh, generating light, uh, maybe we uh, use them to create a magnetic field and drive uh, a motor, or maybe we just park them somewhere to record some information. That path is made out of conductors. And conductors are materials that have the property of having a lot of spots for the electrons to hop around and uh, go through. So silver, copper, gold, aluminum, these are all conductors. Additionally, we don't want the electrons to cheat and avoid doing their work, so we use uh, insulators to prevent them, uh, keep them on the path and prevent them from going elsewhere. So that would be like air, plastic, glass. They don't have a lot of free spots for the electrons to hop through. Two properties of the flow of electrons. One is current. And if you uh, take the flowing electrons and you just count how many pass a given point per second, you have the current. It's 6.2 times 10 to the 18th, some very large number. And you can do that with a multimeter. You connect it in series, and the multimeter will tell you how many electrons are passing through uh, per second. Uh, the other measure is voltage. Voltage is a little harder to conceptualize. Imagine if you had a big bar of conductor, say aluminum. It would have some uh, free electrons floating around there, but they wouldn't be moving anywhere because there's no difference in potential or crowdedness uh, anywhere in the bar. So they all stay in where they are. They're parked. There's no current flowing. So voltage describes the relative difference in crowdedness between two different points. Uh, you could take, imagine you had an electron hotel full of electrons. You hooked up one probe of the multimeter, and then the other one you connected it to Earth. It would tell you the relative difference in crowdedness the voltage or the potential uh, between the electron hotel and uh, planet Earth. You could do it with a piece of paper. You could do it with anything else. Uh, voltage is what causes current to flow. If there's no voltage, the electrons don't go anywhere, right? It's the potential difference between two points, and electrons only flow when there is a potential difference. So we talked a little bit about work. Uh, it's important to measure what that work is, and that work is in the form of resistance. If you take uh, two points, one that has a voltage or potential difference that's one volt higher than the other, and we'll call this ground and we'll call this one volt, and you connect them to uh, each other, how many electrons will flow through that point? The answer is all of them, right? As wide as the pipe is, uh, the electrons will, will flow. So, uh, think of resistance as the width of that pipe. Uh, a resistor uh, narrows the width of that pipe so that instead of all of the electrons flowing at the same time, uh, less of them flow through. And in fact, one ohm is defined as uh, the amount of resistance that causes one ampere to flow with a one volt uh, difference. So uh, one ohm is very little resistance. Everything has a little bit of resistance, even uh, wires and conductors. Uh, 10,000 ohms is a lot of resistance and would only allow a very small amount of current to flow. Also, there's a relationship. Um, as we're talking about resistance, uh, resistance is really defined as uh, defined with current and voltage. And there's the relationship between current, voltage, and resistance. Um, its voltage in volts uh, equals current in amps times the resistance. And you can work that so that if you have two of the values, you can always figure out the third value. And that's the definition of an ohm. It's one volt and one amp. So those are the basics uh, to help you get started. And let's continue from there.